Earth has a new moon? What's up with that? Well, Earth now has another moon. That is today's story. The Earth is this getting is why I'm a highly new intrigued. moon. For 4.5 billion years, Earth got by on the one moon that we know. But from September 29th to November 25th, we're going to have a second moon. Here's Earth. Actually, it's what Earth looks like to a politician, where the land mass is divided up into color-coded countries. And we have a moon, only one moon, called the moon. Here it is. This is about the right size relative to Earth of our moon. If you look at these in textbooks, Earth and the moon are typically drawn maybe this far apart from each other, maybe a little farther but they're just lying to you. The moon would be 30 feet away. There's been clickbait headlines saying, Earth temporarily acquired a new moon. Official name of it is 2024 PT5. That's how we name newly discovered asteroids. There's hundreds of thousands of asteroids and tons of them, literally, tons of them are discovered every year. And so we have a naming scheme for them. It's kind of cute, a little overthought perhaps, but if you take the letters A through Z and omit I and omit Z, then an asteroid will be designated by a letter of the alphabet depending on which semi-month it was discovered in. So if you discover an asteroid in the first half of January, it would have the year and then the letter A to start with. If it's in the second half of January, it'd be the letter B. This was cool when we discovered, you know, 10 or 20 asteroids in a year. But when we started discovering more than 24, we had to put nuance into the nomenclature. So in any semi-month, the first asteroid discovered would get the letter A. Second one would be B. Affixed to the letter it already has indicating it's semi-month. If it's the first asteroid discovered in the first half of March, it would be EA. Second would be EB, EC, ED. All the way down, omitting I, but keeping Z in this case. So there are 25 possible asteroids you can discover in a semi-month. Now suppose we discover even more than that. Well, we restart the second letter with A, but then we start using numerals. A1, B1, C1, D1. E1, A2, B2, C2. We continue this. This asteroid claimed to be our new moon is P discovered the first half of August. And so many other asteroids were discovered in the first half of August. We went through all the alphabet as a second letter and then we went through the alphabet again. We're up to T5 as the second letter. Okay, that's how we keep track of these things. Not that you care. Anyhow, who says this is a moon? It's clickbait, yes. Oh my gosh, so many asteroids, they're flying everywhere and some of them cross Earth's orbit. And if you cross Earth's orbit near where Earth happens to be, it's gonna feel Earth's gravity. You know what it's gonna do? It's gonna come near Earth and then have its orbit altered and it could make a sort of a horseshoe around Earth, completely redirecting its path. People wanna say we have a new moon. It is not captured by Earth, no. So I'm not calling it a moon, sorry. I'm not about clickbait here, I'm about objective reality. So you can say, well, how big is the asteroid that's now a moon of Earth, as the headlines tell you? Well, we could, we've measured it. It's 33 feet across. I'm not calling that a moon. Oh, and for those across the pond, or rather for those everywhere else in the universe other than the United States of America, it's 10 meters, 10 meters across. I can't call that a moon, I'm sorry. Plus it's not captured. It just got its orbit heavily altered by Earth's gravity. And this happens frequently. Was it two years ago? We were still just coming out of COVID. Something very similar to this happened. There was a, you know, 10 meter sized object that did a loop, the loop around the Earth. And maybe there was more news to pay attention to as we were emerging from COVID than there is now. Because hardly anyone talked about it. It's possible for a moment to be interesting, but not newsworthy. I'll give you an example. 
If you found out that this happened multiple times a year, every couple of years, would you write home about it? Oh my gosh, I'm alive at a time when I'm, an asteroid became a moon of the, is it just me? Sorry. So if you care, I don't wanna stop you from caring. I, I know what I'll do. Let me give you information to make it care worthy. Okay, how about that? There's a chance that this rock, 33 feet across, 10 meters, which by the way, you can't see with an unaided eye. You can't even see with a backyard telescope. You need professional uh, devices for this. Uh, it may be left over from the formation of the moon billions of years ago. That's kind of interesting, if that's true, because you'd expect that debris to still be in our vicinity. And what it would mean is this visit that it has offered would not have been the first time it has done such a thing. But I can't call it a moon. Would you call something 33 feet across, a rock in space, a moon? I don't think so. I wouldn't. This brings to question, what is the definition of a moon? To me, a moon is something that hangs out with you in orbit, like our moon. Our moon has been with us ever since it took form, around four billion years ago, plus or minus. We're still determining that. This object is gonna be in our, I'm gonna say airspace, but it's gonna be in space space. It's gonna be in our space space for just a couple of months before it goes on its way. So, no. If you have an object that is affected by Earth's gravity but continues on its way, it was never gravitationally bound to Earth. If you are not gravitationally bound to an object, I cannot call you a moon. That's what's up with that regarding a new moon around Earth. As you may know, we recently posted a video in response to Terence Howard's appearance on Joe Rogan's podcast where he discussed his interpretation of maths. And key points to take away from that are, one, we should critically analyze all the information we come across, and two, be open to our views being challenged. Like this new study on dark matter being debunked, for example, it suggests the universe's expansion is not driven by dark energy, but by weakening forces of nature. Now, when it comes to new theories that challenge our accepted understanding of space, it's important to see how different scientific sources are interpreting these new findings to fully understand it. Luckily, Ground News makes this much easier to do. With the Vantage Plan, you get access to original research, plus every article covering it and even insight on each news publication's political bias and credibility context that could influence their reporting. Their founder and former NASA engineer also designed their blind spot feed, which uses patented technology to help us easily step out of our echo chambers and see important news stories we might have otherwise missed. Exposing yourself to diverse perspectives helps ensure that you don't just know enough about an issue to think you're right, but you actually know enough to recognize when you might be wrong. So, avoid the Dunning-Kruger effect, get ground news, and critically analyze the information you consume, all for $5 a month if you use our link or scan the QR code. You're saving 40% on the same unlimited access Vantage plan you use with the discount. We really can't recommend ground news and their commitment to rigorous analysis and combating misinformation enough. 